Hey everyone and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we're going to take a look at this brand new 2021 and a half Vibe 26BH travel trailer. This is a smaller bunkhouse travel trailer with one slide out. We're going to take a few minutes, walk you around the inside of the RV and the outside of the RV. Then we're going to close it all up and show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, guys, we're now up inside this brand new Vibe 26 bunkhouse travel trailer here. And we're going to start looking here toward the rear of the coach and then kind of spin our way back to the front. So in the rear section here that you've seen on the floor plan that was up a minute ago, um, you have two double bunk beds back here. So up top, you have a window back there that does open. There's an electric outlet here on the left. You have the ladder here built in to help the kid get up and down there. Now down below, you have another window back there, which is also an emergency exit. And then you have an electric outlet there as well. And each bunk has its own light. Down below that is some storage area for some of the kids stuff. And there's a heat vent right there as well. Now over here on the left side, we have the bathroom area. And the bathroom has a door that comes straight in from outside so the kids don't have to run through the whole coach to go use the bathroom. But against the back, you do have your shower area there. There's a skylight up above the shower for a little extra height and light. There's also a vent fan up there as well. Again, uh, you know, kind of venting out some of the shower moisture and also uh, letting in a little more light. Now the shower has one of the uh, vinyl pull across curtains there. You have a foot flush toilet. Over on the left side there, you have your sink along with a little bit of storage underneath. And then you have your medicine cabinet as well. You can kind of see that pop up there in the pictures. A couple lights in the bathroom and an air conditioning vent as well. Spinning on back around here, you have your kitchen area here. And on the right side here, you do have a pretty good size pantry. So you've got some space here. A light in there as well. You also have the 10.7 cubic foot Everchill refrigerator. This is a 12 volt refrigerator. Just below that, you have your electric box with your breakers and fuses. And you can also see another heat vent coming out of the wall there. So no heat vents in the floor. Over to the left of that is gonna be your Furion oven slash three burner stove top. So the oven does have a light in it, has the glass front, the LED lit knobs. Down below that is a pull out drawer, which kind of has the oven front look to it, kind of. And up top, you have the glass cover, which kind of acts as a backsplash as well when you're cooking. You have the Furion hood range and fan exhaust. And then the Furion microwave. The microwave's kind of cool. It's got like a little mirror effect look to it. There is storage, overhead cabinets there on the left. You've got kind of an L-shaped counter there, so it's a decent amount of counter space there. There is two full extending drawers there, which are on uh, ball bearing drawer guides. Then you have some storage below the sink area. The propane leak detector down there as well. Over here, you have a U-shaped dinette. This dinette will also make into a bed, so you can sleep a couple kids here pretty comfortably, or even a couple adults. The tabletop basically just drops down, and that uh, some of the cushion backs fill in for the mattress part. And then below that, you have some storage under each seat area there, with a couple little pull-out uh, plastic tubs. You have nice big windows, kind of a panoramic view there. The window on each side of the slide out do actually open, but the big ones do not. Got a nice decorative light over top of the dinette area there. 
and the unit has pull down uh, roller blinds as well and they're black so they kind of black everything out as well sofa wise you have a trifold sofa so this sofa will flip out make into about a full-size bed so you can could, could sleep a couple more people there if you needed to you have the electric fireplace which is basically about a 5000 BTU space heater but it's a pretty neat little feature looks nice in RVs you're finding that in a lot of brands of campers nowadays just above that you have some storage space there and then you have your IRV technology radio which has a couple speakers here and then it also controls the outside speakers you'll see as well and there's an HDMI input on it along with a USB charger port as well the thermostat that controls your air conditioning and your furnace is just to the left of the TV there on the wall it's a digital thermostat so pretty easy to use it'll cycle through um, but there is a high and low fan mode and also an auto mode as well on that thermostat to the right of that you'll see pop up there is a, another little pantry area uh, or cubby area whatever you want to use it for you do have the uh, high-rise spring faucet sprayer faucet there it's a single basin sink with the little graded cover there and there is also a skylight up above that as well and back here just a little bit you can see your Coleman air conditioner now this is ducted through the ceiling but you can still open these up these little quick dumps here and dump out most of the air conditioning right in this section if you want to and you just close it back to send it through the ducts and another thing that's kind of nice too these ducts are closable so if you wanted to shut this off and push more of the air another direction, you could do that. And they rotate as well. On up into the bedroom area here, this is one of those little pivot hinge doors. So the door is designed a little bit differently, but it's kind of nice because the bedroom is a little bit snug. Um, they're trying to dedicate more space to out here. So it does kind of pivot back a little bit. You have an electric outlet on each side of the bed, hanging closet on the left side of the bed, and you got some overhead cabinets up there. Now this bed does raise up, so there is some storage under there. You have the little cubbies under there. There's also some storage behind those cubbies, and then there's some storage underneath of the cubbies where you could like push your shoes and stuff to. You can see the uh, heat vent down there on the side of the wall there. And back in here in this corner, you do have a closet as well. You can see pop up there. Window over there, which does also open. And on your nightstand over there, just behind it, there's some USB charger ports and another electric outlet back there. And then there's also TV hookups as well on the wall, so you could put a flat screen TV over there if you want to but overall a pretty cool little lightweight style camper here um, this has been a really popular model for the vibe lineup here a lot of half ton trucks are rated to pull this pretty comfortably um, one other thing I think I forgot to mention on the side of the cabinet over there is your modern panel has your breaker your uh, tank meters on it also has the awning in and out button slide in and out button and you have some light switches your 12 volt tank heaters which is pretty nice so if you winter camp or fall camp you have heat pads on your holding tanks and some other stuff here so pretty cool little setup guys we're going to head to the outside i'm going to show you around the outside of the rv and then we're going to come back in here and close it all up show you what it looks like closed We'll be right back on the outside. 
All right, guys, we're back here on the outside of this brand new Vibe 26BH. We're going to start here on the door side of the camper, kind of work our way around. So first thing up front, you have a large pass-through storage compartment here. You can kind of see the aluminum bed framing and stuff there. There is a light switch right there for the cap light. Down below, you have the power stabilizer jacks. You can see pop up there. So you're gonna have a set of jacks on the front and the rear, and they have a little push button on the side of the unit here to lower the front. And then back there on the rear is another push button for the rear section. Now, just underneath of this front section is also the fresh water tank drain, which is up underneath of there as well. You have a power awning with an LED light strip built in, standard on the unit. Has the adjustable arms for tilting and water runoff. They're currently using the Lippert Solid Step. This step comes down, touches the ground, so it doesn't shake the RV as bad when the kids are running in and out of the camper. Uh, good thing to have on a bunkhouse unit. The step is also rated for 500 pounds, where a traditional hover step like the one on the rear of the RV is only rated for 300 pounds. So a little bit of difference in strength capacity as well. You have the large folding entry handle on the front door here to help you get in and out of the RV. Also by the front door, you will have your model number for the camper. So as you're out walking around an RV dealer's lot, look for that model number by the door. That way you can identify the campers you like and you'll be able to tell your salesperson what you're looking at. The unit has a little outdoor kitchen area here. So basically you have a little mini fridge you have a little dump sink and there's a little sprayer faucet thing here as well. So you got a little sprayer faucet here and it just attaches right here to the side. So you have cold water basically. And then you have this little graystone hot plate, basically an electric hot plate right here. Next to that is an electric outlet and cable outlet as well. So you can plug in a little TV out here and sit outside, do some cooking, grilling, and basically kind of watch TV. Up top, you obviously have two little blue speakers lit up up there. So those will allow you to listen to the radio from outside. And then you obviously had the speakers inside we talked about earlier. The stove exhaust, so when you're in there cooking inside and you need to exhaust out that smoke, it comes out right there above that window, but there's a little flapper in there, so you do have to open that. Back here above the rear axle, you have your water heater, so six gallon gas and electric water heater, and you can see the electric switch in the lower left corner there and your drain plug in the middle. The unit also has aluminum wheels and it has the wide stance axle system. You can see the axles are kind of spread apart further. So when it's going down the road, it's less wiggle in the camper. Um, it does make it a little bit harder to twist and turn when you're backing into the campsite, but I'm mean, obviously your truck's doing all the work. But uh, when you're traveling down the road, the highway at 70 miles an hour, it makes it more stable in the wind. On the back here again, you can see you have the rear hover style steps back here to take you straight into the bathroom. It's kind of a nice feature to have that bathroom door. The kids don't have to trek through the whole RV to get to the bathroom. On to the back of the camper here, you have your typical four inch square tube bumper, which is where most people store a dump hose. You have your spare tire, along with a cover to actually cover it, because some brands don't come with a cover, but you got the little Forest River Vibe cover there. Up top there, below the middle running light, it is pre-wired for a backup camera or observation camera. I would definitely recommend the observation camera as you're driving down the road. It's nice to be able to see what's going on behind you. Plus, when you get to the campground, you're able to see behind you to help you back into the campsite. You can also see the roof has a nice arch to it. You can get up there, walk around, just make sure there's nothing sharp stuck in your shoes so you don't damage the roof. But you can get up there, check your seals, check your seams. You know, there is a uh, 
rubber roof caulking. Uh, it's called Dicor that they use on top of campers to seal things up. You do got to get up there, maintain that every once in a while, make sure you inspect it, make sure it doesn't crack open from, you know, just years of, uh, you know, sun trying to dry it out or twisting and flexing of things as they drive down the road. Those little things can come loose and crack open kind of thing. So definitely make sure you check it a few times a year. You may not have to do anything to it, but it's good to inspect that roof. Now down below, you're going to see your gray and black tanks for the back section back here, um, which basically allow for the dumping of some of your tanks. And you're going to have another one up toward the front. You'll see when we go up that way. Now on the back corner here, you have an outside utility shower. So hot and cold water out here. You have your city water inlet and your black tank flush to clean out the toilet tank. And then obviously you can see a decent sized little storage compartment area back here as well. And your furnace exhaust out back here also. Now you have your slide out here. This is an electric slide. So you push a button, it goes in and out. We'll show you that here in a few minutes. Um, but basically that just kind of goes in and out. There is pre-set up for slide out awning toppers. If you do like the topper idea, there's little brackets on those corners there, Solar slide topper brackets. And there's also a track already built into the gutter that runs down the sidewall. So you can slide the awning into that track and attach it to those brackets and you will have a slide out awning topper. The slide out awning topper again just kind of helps with you know water protection not uh, not total water protection but it helps shed away a lot of water from the roof it also helps with leaves twigs debris all that type of stuff to just kind of help keep you from having to get up there and clean that off now down below here is the other dump area that i was referring to Back up over here, we have our freshwater tank inlet. This is a gravity fill inlet. So you basically just stick the hose in there and fill it up. You wanna keep an eye on it in your monitor panel inside there to make sure you don't overfill it. Um, again, the drain for it is up underneath the camper down there. The other side of the storage compartment and also these baggage doors are held up by magnetic holders, not plastic clips. So they're less likely to have any type of malfunction, breaking issues type of thing. On the corner here, you will have your weight stickers. So we're gonna pop up here. The first one's gonna be your gross vehicle weight sticker, which is the most you can load a camper up to, this camper up to, before it exceeds its capacity. It'll also have your axle weights on there, your um, VIN number and production date as well. Now the next sticker is your dry weight sticker. That is what the camper weighed when it rolled off the factory assembly line. So you take your gross weight minus your dry weight and that gives you your carrying capacity. And it's always off by a few pounds because the factory kind of factors in that you're gonna have propane in the uh, RV as well. So it does come off a few pounds, but it's really close. Next is going to be your tire sticker, which also tells you, uh, you know, your tire pressure and your tire size that's supposed to be on the RV from the factory. Really important to check your tire pressure, guys. If you let that get too low, the tire cannot handle the weight properly that it's basically got on it, and it blows out a lot easier. So make sure you do check your tire pressure before all of your trips. Power tongue jack up front here. Does have the manual override and built-in light. You have two 20-pound propane tanks, a hard bottle cover as well. You also are gonna have one battery on the front of the unit that comes with it from Couch's RV Nation. Back in behind there is a battery disconnect switch also. Now that battery disconnect switch comes in handy for storage purposes. You can just flip that switch so next time you come to use it, the battery's not dead. You have your traditional safety chains up here. You have 2 and 5 16 hitch ball coupler. 
and a seven-way Bargman plug with basically controls all your lights and your brakes and stuff that go to the camper. That's how its power is fed back to it. You obviously have to have a brake control in your truck to control the four brakes on the camper. There is also a breakaway cable on there, which basically is kind of like an emergency brake if it ever de uh, came undone from your tow vehicle and decoupled then basically it pulls out that cable locking up the brakes on the RV. Now the camper does also come with a solar panel now. So you'll have a Furion solar panel on here and there's also a solar charging system that is in the storage compartment as well you see pop up there. So a really nice new standard feature for the RV. Also you have a three quarter fiberglass cap front. So this is stronger and a little more heavy duty than a traditional flat roll front that you'll find on some lesser priced campers. The fiberglass camper or cap also has a built in LED light strip there that you see. And in the lower portion of it is just kind of a rolled aluminum uh, diamond plate kind of look to it. Again, guys, thanks for checking out the video. We are going to run back inside here real quick. We're going to show you how it looks all closed up and the slide out kind of moving in and out. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, guys, we're now back inside this new Vibe 26BH there. We walked it through the inside and the outside. Now we're going to close it all up here. And basically all you got to do, again, this is an electric slide system. So you got a button right here on the side of the cabinet here. And you're just going to push in. The slide out comes straight in and straight out. So pretty simple concept here. If it were to fail electronically, it can be manually done. You'll want to obviously kind of consult the service manual just to make sure you do it properly. It's not super hard to do, but you do want to make sure you do it right. Now you can let off the button if you need to. So if there's a tree over there or an electric pole or something that uh, is on the side of the campground spot, you need to check it. You can run out there and check it. Push the button again and bring it right the rest of the way in. So we're all the way in now. You can kind of see here, I can still come in here, walk right on around through here. I can get to my refrigerator. I can get to my bathroom. Of course, in this model, you got the outside bathroom door you could go, uh, use if you needed. And you can even get to the kids' bunks and even their little storage area down below. So completely functional with the slide closed. I really like this part of the, the uh, slide system here, being able to use the RV with it closed. So if you stop at a rest area, you stop at a grocery store, you want to come in here and do what you need to do, it's totally functional. You can get right on into your bedroom. If you're sleeping at a rest area or something like that, Walmart parking lot, if you get tired in the middle of the night traveling, you can come on in, use the RV, and not have to open it up. Now, when you go to put it out, pretty simple. Again, you just push the out button. Again, guys, be sure to check out Couches RV Nation. They are one of the largest internet wholesale dealers in the country, guys. They will definitely save you a lot of money on a new RV. Thank you again for checking out my YouTube channel and keeping up with the videos. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. I really, really do appreciate it. Thanks again, guys.